A primary consideration of Slender Pyramid and other high-density apple systems is that the energy produced through photosynthesis is directed into producing fruit rather than wood, so large chunks are not developed to support the crop. Therefore, trellising is an essential part of this new system of apple growing. Because this will be a certified organic planting, we must not use pr prohibited materials, including pressure-treated posts. The majority of the posts in this orchard are 10-foot steel tree stakes with one perforated side to allow the trellis wires to pass through. Stakes were set in place by one person, while a very skilled operator pushed them into the sandy soil with a tractor bucket. In heavier soils or with wood poles, a hydraulic post pounder is typically used for installation. The slanted end posts were installed in the 24-inch drilled holes that had been evened out with a shovel. A cinder block back brace was inserted behind the pole to stabilize it in the hole. Then the pole adjusted to the desired angle, then backfilled and tamped. Slanted end posts can be set using a protractor to sight the desired angle for the two outer rows. When a wire is stretched from the top of the pole back away from the trees to an anchor post, the pole, wire, and soil line should ideally form an equilateral triangle. In addition to steel posts, a single vertical wood pole was placed in the middle of each row for increased support. Organic regulations preclude the use of pressure-treated lumber for trellis construction. Therefore, locally sourced white cedar was used due to its relative rot resistance, low cost, local availability, and uniform quality. Poles were 6 inch diameter and 10 feet long. End brace posts are an especially critical part of the trellis construction, since they ultimately support the entire weight of the row. We use 6 inch diameter, 6 foot long posts driven 4 feet in the ground. A post pounder was available that could drive these shorter poles. This imp implement uses tractor hydraulics to position the post channel and pounding head and to lift the head into position. The head is dropped by gravity, then lifted again hydraulically and repeated until the post is driven to the desired depth. Post driving only takes a minute or two, but positioning the post takes a bit more time. Now that all the trellis posts have been set, it is time to pull wire. In a tall spinder slender axis planting, the trees are not allowed to grow thick trunks, yet they are encouraged to fruit heavily. Thus, the full weight of the crop must be borne on the trellis, so skimping on the first year is not suggested. High tensile 12 gauge wire was used for all four lines. Wires were pulled out along each row and hand tightened, then crimped. It is especially important to use wire, crimps, and tools designed for trellises, since many types of basic fencing wire cannot handle the unique stresses of orchard trellises. Wires were passed through holes at the same height on the steel posts and finally through a single hole drilled through the back anchor post, then wrapped and crimped, making a very secure connection. The wire was then cut and passed through a hole in the front anchor post and hand tightened before crimped. Wires were then tensioned using inline strainers and a tensioning handle. These strainers allow for subsequent adjustment of wire tension and can be installed after wires have been pulled.